16 Fun Facts About Ducks Ducks are among the most recognized type of birds to many people, whether they're a true novice or an avid bird watcher. However, even experienced birders or duck hunters may not know just how unique these birds can be. Check out the 16 duck facts below to test your current knowledge or learn some new trivia to surprise friends with. Duck Trivia Facts all types of ducks are part of the bird family Anatidae, which also includes swans and geese. There are between 140 and 175 birds in the Anatidae family, though not all of them are considered ducks. There are species of ducks found on every continent except Antarctica. Some duck species, such as the mallard, are found in multiple places throughout the world, while others have very small, restricted ranges. A baby duck is called a duckling, and an adult male duck is referred to as a drake. An adult female duck is called a hen or a duck, and a group of ducks can be called a raft, a team, or a paddling. Generic terms like bird, chick, and flock also apply to ducks. All ducks have highly waterproof feathers as a result of an intricate feather structure and a waxy coating that's spread on each feather while preening. A duck's feathers are so waterproof that, even when the duck dives underwater, its downy under layer of feathers right next to the skin will stay completely dry. The uropigal gland at the base of the tail produces the waxy oil that coats feathers so well many other birds also have the same gland. Ducks are precocial, which means that their ducklings are covered with down and able to walk and leave the nest just a few hours after hatching. This independence actually helps to protect the young chicks from predators, since they don't need to stay in the vulnerable nest area for long. A hen will lead her ducklings by foot up to half a mile or more to find a suitable water source for swimming and feeding. As soon as a baby duck's down is dry after hatching, they will be able to swim. It isn't unusual to see very tiny ducklings swimming after their mother. Male ducks have an eclipse plumage similar to females that they wear after the breeding season for about a month as their new feathers grow. During that month, they are completely flightless and therefore more vulnerable to predators. Because of this, many male ducks stay in isolated, remote areas or flock together for protection in numbers during this time. Most duck species are monogamous for a breeding season, but they don't typically mate for life. Instead, they will seek out new mates each year, choosing the healthiest, strongest, best mate who can help them pass on their genes to a new duckling generation. While constructing their nests, female ducks will line it with soft down feathers they pluck from their own breast. This gives their eggs the best possible cushioning and insulation and exposes the hen's skin so she can keep the eggs warm more efficiently. Other duck nesting materials include grass, mud, twigs, leaves, reeds, and other plant material. Ducks are omnivorous, opportunistic eaters and will eat grass, aquatic plants, insects, seeds, fruit, fish, nuts, crustaceans, and other types of food. Some ducks, such as mergansers, are more specialized in their dietary needs, but most types of ducks can adapt well to a variety of food sources. This helps ensure they always have adequate nutrition and can often stay in the same range year-round as different foods become available. A duck's bill is shaped to help it forage in mud and strain food from the water. A hard nail at the tip of the bill helps with foraging, while the lamellia comb-like structure on the sides of the bill strains small insects and crustaceans from the water. Most male ducks are silent, and very few ducks actually quack. Instead, their calls may include squeaks, grunts, groans, chirps, whistles, brays, and growls. Females can also make a wide range of different noises and are usually more vocal than their male counterparts. It is a myth that a duck's quack won't echo. This has been conclusively disproved through scientific acoustic tests and was even featured as busted on an episode of the Discovery Channel show Mythbusters. Ducks have been domesticated as pets and farm animals for more than 500 years, and all domestic ducks are descended from either the mallard duck or the muscovy duck. Mallards are easy to crossbreed with other types of ducks and often hybridize with all types of ducks at local ponds. This can lead to very unusual feather shapes and color patterns that can make their offspring confusing to identify. There are more than 40 different breeds of domestic duck. The all-white Peking duck, also called the Long Island duck, 
is the most common variety raised for eggs and meat, especially on large commercial farms. Smaller organizations or individual farmers often try out different duck breeds, depending on their needs and taste preferences. Because of their familiarity, ducks are often featured as fictional characters. The two most famous fictional ducks are Disney's Donald Duck, which premiered in 1934, and Warner Brothers' Daffy Duck, which premiered in 1937. Ducks have also been icons for companies and featured in advertising campaigns, and some ducks are even mascots for schools, businesses, and sports teams. Ducks are birds. Ducks are also called waterfowl because they are normally found in places where there is water like ponds, streams, and rivers. Ducks are related to geese and swans. Ducks are sometimes confused with several types of unrelated water birds with similar forms, such as loons, an aquatic bird found in many parts of North America and Northern Europe, or grebes, freshwater diving birds, and coots, medium-sized water birds which are members of the rail bird family. Duck Characteristics Ducks are smaller than, than their relatives, swans and geese. Ducks also have shorter necks and wings and a stout body. A female duck is called a hen, they are identified by their very dull, brown feathers. The females have dull brown feathers so that they can hide from enemies and predators. They can also camouflage themselves in their nests and also protect their young. A male duck is called a drake. You can identify the male duck by its brightly colored feathers. They use these colored feathers to attract the female ducks for mating. Here is a beautifully colored drake with a purple plumage, shiny green head coloring, silvery white body and gray wings with blue markings. The males use their colorful plumage to attract females. However, they will lose or molt their colorful feathers when the females are busy hatching the eggs. The males will now look like the female in color and will be unable to fly temporarily. They will molt again in early autumn and get back their colorful feathers and be able to fly again. The females also molt. They replace all their feathers and get new ones after their ducklings are hatched. Ducks have webbed feet, which are designed for swimming. Their webbed feet act like paddles for the ducks. The reason ducks can swim in cold water is their amazing circulatory system. Their blood vessels are laid out very close to each other in their legs and feet in a network that allows the warm and cool blood to exchange heat. This allows the warm blood going from the body into the feet to warm the cooler blood re-entering the body from the feet, and the blood going to the feet is cooled enough that the cold does not bother the duck. Thus the duck's feet are able to tolerate the cold and not bother them. All birds have this circulatory system in their legs and feet. A duck has waterproof feathers. There is a special gland called the preen gland near the duck's tail. This tiny gland produces oil which the duck uses to coat its feathers. The duck picks up the oil with its head and beak, and then smears it all over its body to make the outer feathers waterproof. Without this protective barrier, a duck's feathers would become waterlogged and because they spend their whole lives around and in water, this waterproof barrier is extremely important. Beneath the waterproof coat are fluffy and soft feathers which keep the duck warm. The duck's mouth is called a beak or bill. It is usually broad and flat and has rows of fine notches along the edge called lamellae. The lamellae helps the duck to grip its food so that it will not slip off. However, duck's beak comes in different shapes and sizes. The shape of the beak and body determines how the duck will hunt for its food.